Well, sanity has prevailed. Proteus batsman Hashim Amla, despite recent poor form, has been announced in the squad to go to the Cricket World Cup later this year. What, almost 8,000 runs at an average of nearly 50. And he averages over 60 in ODI cricket in England. But would he have even made the national team had it not been for quotas? Let's get started. Good evening and welcome to the Democracy Gauge. I'm Bongani Bingwa. 25 years into democracy, we have a black Springbok captain. There have been other stars from Brian Habana uh, to even Chester Williams. But the majority of players in the national rugby team remain white. This is true of cricket and a number of other elite sports in which black players were excluded and marginalized under apartheid. So what's the ideal solution? Wait for transformation to happen on its own or force the issue through a quota system? And what happens to players who are given chances because of their skin colour? Will they have the respect of the fans and importantly teammates if they are seen as only so-called quota players? Sport has been used as a tool to heal a nation divided as a result of apartheid, but as a number of codes continue along old racial lines is patience running out. And that's why we're asking our poll question tonight. Do we need quotas in sport? You can choose from our three colors. Green is for yes, yellow is for maybe, and of course red is for no. We ask you to send us a WhatsApp video. Do it now. Don't wait till later. The number to do so on is 065-862-4548. You can interact with our poll on our website, sabcnews.com. The conversation is also on Facebook and Twitter. Remember to use our hashtags there they are on your screen now former Bafana Bafana captain Neil Tovey believes sport in South Africa can still be a relevant tool for change Tovey of course you'll remember was part of that historic 1996 squad that lifted the Africa Cup of Nations trophy Bafana Bafana of course uh, did so just four years after being readmitted to the international fold after years of isolation Sifiso Ramara sent us this story. The nation was united 23 years ago when Bafana Bafana lifted the AFCON trophy. The historic moment came after the heroics of Mark Williams, who scored a brace against Tunisia in the final. Tovi and his teammates stood alongside former president Nelson Mandela when they lifted the trophy and it was celebrated throughout the country. Sport uh, certainly plays a huge, huge role in unifying a country and uh, although we, a whole sort of entity, a uh, couple decades into our democratic country, uh, it certainly still plays a major role and forever will. Tovi says 25 years into democracy, sport is still relevant in the lives of ordinary South Africans. Members of the public agree that sport is still an important and relevant tool for change. Based on the history of the World Cup, the Football World Cup, the Rugby World Cup and the Cricket World Cup, it combined a lot of communities. It's very, very important. It still uh, bring people together in sports. But others say more can still be done through sport in a fragmented society. To still have a segregation. If you can check now, people are still saying rabbits for white, uh, football is for blacks. South Africa always celebrates together as a nation when something major is achieved on the sport front. The winning of the 1995 Rugby World Cup on home soil is a good example. This was followed by the hosting of the 2003 Cricket World Cup and another win in the 2007 Rugby World Cup in Paris. The hosting of the 2010 FIFA World Cup, which was voted as the best tournament ever back then, also brought the nation together. As South Africans, I think we, we're very much driven by our enthusiasm for sport, the success of our national teams. Yeah, we sometimes we are a very uh, um, jealous kind of nation. We don't like losing. The achievements of individual sports stars are also celebrated across racial lines. When Kasta Semenya and Wade van Niekerk win gold medals at major international events 
All South Africans celebrate their success. Sfiso Ramara, SABC News. Yeah, lifting that trophy in 1996. Listen, these days we're lucky if we just qualify. Well, in studio today, we are joined by Dumisa Makalima, who is the head coach for cricket at the University of Johannesburg. Dumisa, welcome to the Democracy Gage. Uh, it's fantastic to have you with us on the show. How are you doing? But you're not the only one who's with us. Uh, in our Port Elizabeth studio, we are joined, of course, uh, by Zola Yeye, and he's the former Springbok team manager. Good evening to you, and thank you for being part of the Democracy Gauge. Good evening, Bongani and your viewers. Dumisa, let me start with you. I mean, you're the head coach uh, of cricket uh, at the University of Johannesburg. Uh, we've certainly made strides when it comes to transformation in South African sport in the last 25 years. But there are many who will argue it simply hasn't been enough. It hasn't gone far enough. Listen, uh, initiatives have been, have been put in place simply because of our past. Um, we are not like other countries where, um, I mean, appetite has taken place in South Africa. So these initiatives have been put in place um, to neutralize, to um, give other people opportunities that haven't had, you know, opportunities in the past. So has, has transformation gone far enough in sport? It's making progress. Rome wasn't built in one day. Um, I think it's not going to happen tomorrow. I think it's going to take its toll. If you 25 look, years into it, we still must be patient? Listen, uh, Wangani, I think, uh, you know, when you look at our Springbok team or uh, um, our cricket team five years, ten years back, it's a lot different to what you see now. I mean, uh, I think the World Cup squad was announced today. And I think you, you're seeing a couple of faces, and I think the guys are there on merit, but there had to be initiatives put in place for those guys to be there. Um, if there was no initiatives put in place, it will be a bit difficult for those guys to be there. Zolaya, let me bring you into the conversation. At the last Rugby World Cup, I mean, we went to with an almost entirely white squad. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, you know, is rugby transforming uh, quickly enough? Uh, thank you for that question. The, the, the topic itself, quota, uh, brings an irresistible surge of emotions in me because it's uh, this, we don't suppose at this time and age, uh, to be discussing quota. If, if uh, the sporting federations were, were transforming, most of them are untransforming. As a consequence, it's delayed and it's long overdue. Zola, there is also this idea in some circles that, you know, you can't uh, force these codes to transform faster than they should, almost as if to suggest that when you bring in black players, those would not necessarily be of the same standard as their white counterparts. What's your response to that? Uh, they say charity begins at home. What needs to happen first then we need to have a political will that will embrace the changes that are happening in South Africa, and especially transformation. And if you look at the sports budget at the moment, it's meagre. It does not talk to the kind of quest we want for sport to transform, to be where we want to be and who, who we want to, to, to be. The problem with sport at the moment, uh, we've had six ministers of sport since 1994, a high turnover. That also has a huge impact. So there's no continuity from then. Now, you get a lot of uh, small groupings outside sport or who purport to be sports representatives delaying the process and making transformation a sort of a racist thing or quota, so to speak, a racist thing. Although it's quota is supposed to and quota, definition of quota, it's, it's a share, it's a percentage of a bigger picture. So we're not in minority in South Africa, we're in majority. And this was introduced to try to, to force uh, the so-called white teams to embrace black, black players into their fold. That's why I'm saying that we can't, by, at this point in time, to still be talking about the quota system, still be talking about black and white. We're supposed to be talking about players. And the irony of the whole thing, the irony of the whole thing, is that when you go to these black players, 
Sia Colis, you say you are a quota player or Amla. He, 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 he denies it. He said, I'm not a quota. I came here on merit. Because no one wants to embrace quota. And you go to the officials, even at Saru, uh, they will say that, no, we don't have quotas here. Uh, players Zola, I have are, to come in here. selected on merit. Zola, I have Nobody to come in here. To I have to come in here. I know there's a slight this. delay in our conversation, but I have to come in here. You mentioned Sia Kolisi. One of the most controversial uh, moments in sport this year was when he said, for example, he doesn't think uh, Nelson Mandela, if he were alive today, would support the quota system. We shouldn't be having this conversation, but we are, because as you say, transformation hasn't happened fast enough. And that does have consequences for support, sponsorships, and performance, does it not? Absolutely. You know, reading Sia's statement, he's also denying that he's a quota player. This is what I've said earlier on. He maintains that it, it became part and parcel of the bigger picture because he was selected on merit. But that's far fashion and unfounded because the minute you step into that team, you become part of the bigger picture and you play on merit. You get the skills and, and also the training and the coaching that brings you up to the same level as others who have been advantaged all along. Demisa, let me bring you back into the conversation. I mean, one understands that uh, players like Sia Kolisi and Hashim Amla, as we've just mentioned, are incredible players. They would uh, walk into any squad around the world. And yet, had there not been policies to make transformation a priority, one does wonder if they would have made it. And more importantly, one wonders how many others of their ability never made it into those squads because we haven't transformed fast enough. No, of course. I, I mean, for me, it's very sad that um, we get sportsmen of that caliber uh, who've gone through the processes. And meanwhile, there's people in the background who've been fighting the fights that they have fought for us, you know, to be talking in this platform, for guys to be playing at that platform. And, and now there is this, um, you know, transformation is not necessary or, um, or quotas are not, are not necessary. But there's a platform that 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 has to that had to be equalized you know in our country for you know for players who are underdeveloped who come from underdeveloped um, uh, backgrounds to be able to perform and play at the platform where everybody else can plays. that be done though i mean one of the points here colisi made he speaks about nutrition he speaks about training about coaching very early on in life you may have a talented kid playing in a dusty township somewhere but because he or she doesn't have all the necessary things you need uh, to uh, you know basically use as a support structure they will never perform at their optimum level no, absolutely. I've always had, an, had, a, had a question and um, also an issue with, um, with that is that the government has to come into play. Um, you cannot expect transformation to happen as quickly as you want it. Meanwhile, if you go to the, I mean, to the underdeveloped areas, to our schools in the locations where there are no infrastructure for kids to play at that level, and yet you want quality players to play at that level. They're not going to come out of a magic box. It's impossible. Zola. Let me ask you, what's your response to white players, uh, to talented youngsters who want to go overseas because they look at transformation, they look at the quota system, uh, and they say they don't have a future. They'll take their chances in Australia, in England. What's your response to them? It's, it, it dovetails with the same uh, uh, affirmative action phenomenon. And once you are black and then you are ushered into the, the, the levels they are in, immediately there's the kind of uh, look at you as if you've been parachuted unfairly into that space. And an easiness that leaves the entire family to, that decide, that makes the entire family to decide to emigrate to Australia to give them opportunities. If you look at some of the players at the moment, who are playing uh, in France, they are representing the French team, national team. In Scotland, you get the same. In Ireland, you get these guys. The interesting part of it, some of these names you have never heard of at all. But quietly, they, they looked at the situation, they said that with the kind of 
uh, you know, uh, objectives of, of transformation that are put in place, that it should be quota system, there should be this and that. We don't have a chance in this country. Let me go and get to greener pastures where our talents can be exposed. There, the numbers are not so big and also bringing a South African immediately is sort of a, right. an aura of invincibility. It's All right, Zola, we'll have to leave there, I'm afraid. We've uh, simply run out of time. Uh, we'll and have to leave our conversation there. We've simply run out of time. Uh, thank you for your input. And Demisa, thank you, of course, uh, for of course. being a part of the discussion. All right, a reminder then of our poll question this evening. Do we need quotas in sport? Uh, you've got to look at it both ways. Green is the color for yes. Uh, yellow, if you're in doubt, maybe. And red is for no. Do send us your WhatsApp videos, 0658. 8624548. We'll share some of your views after this quick break. While painting the nursery and worrying about childcare, Lauren has an epiphany. Her medical aid offers some maternity benefit and 24 7 baby line to talk her through those new parent panic moments. Bring on that mini-me! That's real medical aid. Exciting, isn't it? We do not just speak. We let every voice in our nation find full expression in language and in culture. We do not just teach. We empower all people with education. We do not just bring you the news. We place you where the news is happening. We do not just entertain, we take you on journeys. We do not just broadcast sport, we create an arena for sporting heroes to inspire you. Ours is not just a job, it's a calling to ensure that everyone in our nation is informed, educated and entertained. We are able to do this because you do your part. SABC TV licenses. It's all made possible by you. We were there at the birth of a new nation. We are here today as her democracy matures. An impartial and independent witness to history SABC News, always there when South Africa decides. The SABC News mobile app is your one-stop digital portal to all the news you need. Stay connected with the latest in breaking news. Watch the SABC News channel along with clips and live streams of all the big news events. And listen to all the SABC News radio stations live, including podcasts and much more. Simply download the SABC News app to your Android or iOS device from either the Play Store or the App Store. SABC News. Independent. Impartial. Welcome back. Of course, we make the promise on this show that it's all about your views, your perspective. So let's find out what some of you have been saying on social media. Uh, let's start with Facebook. Uh, we've got a comment there from one Albert who says, uh, Good evening, Bongani. Yes, each and everyone who's participating in sport activities needs it. For example, athletes who play soccer, rugby, golf, etc. are getting sponsors from banks and communication networks. That's what Albert says. On Twitter, Nuno says, just pick the best. Doesn't matter if they're yellow, pink or blue. I just want the best team on the pitch. Uh, Mzima says, we need grassroots sports development. Schools should have professional sports coaches, uh, not tired teachers as coaches. And I suppose that's a really, really big part of the debate. It's one thing to expect the codes uh, to produce the players, but if you're not supporting them at grassroots level in the schools, in the places where youngsters show a lot of promise, but without the development 
and the right coaching, they'll never succeed. All right, that's the picture on Twitter. We've been asking you to send us WhatsApp uh, videos. Those are coming up next. All right, the People's View allows you to interact with us live and share your views candidly, directly from your phone, wherever you are. We've been asking you to send us WhatsApp videos. Take a look. Basically, my thoughts on quotas in sports and transformation on the back of the announcement that came for the Cricket World Cup 2019, the Proteus squad, is that uh, cricket are in a beautiful place whereby they can select players on merit without anyone questioning those selections. I think the uh, emergence of players like Kakis or Rabada, as well as Andy De Pesukwayo, as a, and a variety of other um, colored players such as JP Dumini, uh, Reza Hendricks, who unfortunately didn't make the squad, has made it possible for them to just pick a squad uh, that nobody makes a fuss about. So this is the beautiful place that cricket finds themselves in. But it isn't just by sheer luck that they got here. They have had transformation targets in the lower levels of the game prior to announcing the squad, uh, which was announced today. So I think the hard work was put in way before they were able to get to this place where can they they can just pick whatever squad they want and the one they feel that will represent south africa best at the cricket world cup in england cheers Reza Hendricks. Now that's a player to watch out for for the future. Now if you want to be part of the People's View in our next show, simply send us a WhatsApp video 065-862-4548. At the end of this show, I'll throw forward to Monday's topic. And if your name is Karla Geser, your story is coming up after the break. In a UN report, scientists say climate change is getting worse. One third of our food sources for the population come out of the ocean. We spoke to people who have been directly affected. We have lost a lot of cattle. Gamesburg, Vlakte, Tosca, Gebiet and Jakalskop. Everywhere you will see there's animals dying. I've lost two of my cattle this January. Africa's demand for clean drinking water is rising. Drinking water is a top, top, top priority. The next day when the water comes back, it's dirty. I have implemented a level 5 water restriction, effective immediately. Environmentalistic solution to preserve the planet. This is a Cape Kirpa, which uh, is also one of the endemic species that uh, is only found within the Western Cape, so it occurs nowhere else in the world except in, in our water system. We're explorers. We always have been endlessly curious, always looking for answers, for new frontiers, for new stories. Because that is who we are. From script to screen, from yelling action to taking you on a journey. Radio producers, script writers, on air presenters, news reporters, sports analysts. We spend late nights creating captivating storylines and earlier mornings keeping you informed, educated, and entertained. For us, it's not a job, it's a calling. We do this and more because you do your part. SABC TV licenses made possible by you. The Zimbabwean government says it's now planning to give compensation to white farmers who have forced off the land they occupied by the government of Robert Mugabe. For reasons of political expedience, this attempt is driven by opportunism and is bound to further deepen the political and economic crisis in Zimbabwe. A small group of people chanted Makhachule's name at the launch in Sandton City. They allegedly ripped apart some copies of the book and threw the pages around. Clearly that book wants to divide South Africa. We wanted to make it very clear that we stand by this book and we stand by Peter Louis Mayberg as a, an outstanding author.
All right, welcome back to the Democracy Gauge. Before the break, I told you I'll be throwing forward to Monday's topic. Getting too excited, I suppose. Uh, we will not be having the show, obviously, over the Easter break. So we'll put up our next poll on Monday afternoon. So look out for that on our social media pages on Facebook and Twitter. We'll put up Tuesday's topic on Monday because that's when the show resumes. Now, as you've seen in recent weeks, we've crisscrossed the country looking for South African stories, talking to ordinary folks about their experience of the last 25 years of democracy. You can find all of those stories on our elections website, sabcnews.com forward slash elections. And uh, today is no exception. We are going to KwaZulu-Natal, where Karla Geyser is an expedition leader there. Uh, she was, of course, the expedition leader of uh, an all-female uh, expeditions on the continent. Uh, and they raise fines for wildlife conservation projects throughout sub-Saharan Africa. Hello, my name is Carla Geyser. I'm 46 years old and I'm the founder of the Blue Sky Society Trust. Blue Sky is a non-profit organization that raises money for various conservation, environmental and humanitarian projects. In 2012 I started the Blue Sky Society Trust uh, it was around this time that I also started hearing about what was happening to our wildlife in Africa where we are losing currently on average two game rangers a week, 98 elephants a day, three rhinos and countless pangolin to poaching and to human wildlife conflict. In 2016 I led my first all-female expedition. It was called the Elephant Ignite Expedition and we drove just under 16,000 kilometers over a 100 day period through 10 African countries. Our main focus was on elephant poaching crisis. I chose a few of these beneficiaries as part of our fundraising efforts. It's also about showcasing the work that these women and men do on a daily basis. They are actually the heroes that are out there every single day. 1994 I was freshly out of school so it was a very exciting time for me, scary as well, but in the last couple of years, I have definitely noticed a difference in the conservation field and how more and more people are, from rural communities are getting involved. Today, I am choosing the yellow paddle. I believe we have come a very long way, but I still believe that we've got a long way to go in South Africa. There's still a lot of corruption and greed that is, is in our country, but on the upside, in the last 15 to 20 years I've seen a difference and that makes me positive that we have still got great things to work towards. Right, we well, thank you as always for watching our show and taking part. Let's take a, let's take a quick look at today's results. 43% uh, say yes, 16 maybe, and 41% say no. That's where we'll leave it, as I say. Have a wonderful Easter. We'll see you again on Tuesday afternoon. Until then, from Fortune, myself, and the rest of the team, Obusuko Benzol. Good night.